This is a quick demonstration of the OBS shader filter plugin for OBS Studio. Uh, this is a plugin which allows you as the user to enter in your own uh, GPU shader code and apply that to OBS video sources. Uh, that allows you to do per pixel modifications for effects like drop shadows, borders, uh, masking, whatever else, simple things like that. Not quite as well as a dedicated shader would, and not always as efficient, but good enough to make up for some of the things that OBS currently doesn't natively do. Uh, be aware this is uh, pre-release software. Uh, it does use or interface with OBS in somewhat unusual ways, so... I can't guarantee that if you push it too hard, it may not crash your OBS Studio installation. Be a little bit careful with it, be gentle. Hopefully over time it will mature more and be a little more guaranteed to work. Uh, to actually get it, uh, best way is to go to the obsproject.com website here. Uh, go to the forum section here. Go to the resources tab. Have a list of a variety of community resources here. Uh, at the moment, the OBS Shader Filter 09 Beta release is the top item here. It will drop down as more things get released over time, but for now you can just go here. Uh, downloading it is through the external GitHub site here. Uh, there is some documentation here if you need to peruse that. Uh, the actual release is over here under the Release tab. Currently, binaries are only available for Windows because I don't have a environment set up for building Mac or Linux. I don't know of any reason it wouldn't build if you were to get the source and try it, but I haven't yet done it. As far as Windows goes, all you need to do is open the zip file here. The folder structure is exactly what the OBS installation has. So all you need to do is drop it into your OBS installation folder. In my case, I already have them. Uh, you also will need to provide administrator permission there to write to the Program Files folder. Generally, your OBS installation is in Program Files x86 OBS Studio. Uh, the structure of this and most other plugins is the OBS Plugins folder. Depending on your processor type, either in the 64-bit or the 32-bit, Folder, you'll have the DLL here, similarly in 32-bit. And then in the data folder, under OBS plugins, each plugin has its own folder. This is the one for this plugin. Uh, contains localization strings, as well as a collection of example shaders that you can use as they are for some typical effects, or modify or referenced in authoring your own shaders. So that's about all to show there. Let me actually get OBS up here. So here's an empty demo scene. Go ahead and add a background image, first of all. That one. Add some text. I am also going to add a static image that would represent the way you would have a game capture source set up usually. Bigger. That's kind of a basic streaming setup. So let's say you want this to be a little bit shinier. Say you want the game capture to stand out a little bit more from the background. So one simple thing you can do. Uh, in the Filters window here, use the User Defined Shader filter. That is the one provided by the OBS Shader Filter plugin. 
uh, we're using a predefined shader from a file, so click that we're loading from a file here. Browse. It will default to the examples folder in the plugin installation. Or right now we want border.shader. Currently it doesn't do anything. Uh, one, because of a bug in OBS, you have to close and reopen the filters window. After that, you'll see that there's a border color here. Change that to something nice and pretty like fine green. Still doesn't show anything because the border only renders colored pixels to the outside of the image. To actually draw the outside of the image, we need to add some extra pixels to all sides of the image. This do this, we see the image grows by three pixels in each dimension, and those pixels are filled in with green. Now suppose we want to also add a drop shadow on top of that. Stack multiple instances of this filter. If this one a name so OBS doesn't complain at me. Again, I'm going to load a filter from a file. The file I want here is rectangular drop shadow. As this is just a rectangular game capture, it doesn't have any complex geometry. And I have to reopen the filters window. Now, for some reason, this drop rectangular drop shadow requires me to actually put a blur size on the shadow here before it shows up. Now it's rendering. Not doing much. Because again, all of the actual shadow is rendering outside the bounds of the image. So once I add extra pixels, Three on each side for the size of the blur, and another three on the right and bottom for the offset of the shadow. And we can see here a reasonably nice drop shadow. Uh, that's actually done in constant time on the GPU. It's basically a average of how many pixels it knows to be opaque based on how close it is to the border of the image doesn't require doing multiple sampling from the texture or anything the way a true drop shadow would. So that should be pretty efficient for your GPU. If you have something more complex like, say, text, there is a filter provided in the examples as well that is more like a true drop, drop shadow. It is just called dropshadow.shader. And, and Actually adding an offset and a bit of blur radius on here. See uh, actual drop shadow on the text. Now, one, this is not a two-pass blur being used for the drop shadow. It is an n-squared sampling, so it's kind of GPU intensive. Use the size of your blur cautiously. Make sure you don't blow up your GPU or anything. Uh, also, uh, depending on how the input texture is authored, you may need to treat the alpha as pre-multiplied or not. I believe that text in OBS Studio is not pre or is pre-multiplied, so you need to turn that on to make it look a little bit better. Kind of see the difference there. The alpha falls off a little more quickly than it should if I have that turned off. Try turning that off and on if you have something that looks a little bit funny with your drop shadow. And I guess one other thing to demonstrate is that say you wanted your text to be blinky. Actually change the name. The blink dot shader here. Open the filter, give it a speed, and you will see that you can actually do animation effects. Current time is an input to your shader. Another thing you can do with animation. Ah. Plugin does provide the option to override the entire text of the effect instead of filling it in with template. So you can write a vertex shader and other such things for your shader if you wish to. In this case, I'm going to load the uh, pulse.effect, which is a lead effect, including both a vertex and a pixel shader. Load that up. We open the filter window.
try to avoid strange AI inputs. Here you see the actual vertices of the source being modified by the vertex shader. Increase and decrease the size of it over time. Again, animation. So that's some stuff that you can potentially do with these things. If you want to author your own shaders, uh, say we have some kind of texture that we want to do something a little more custom to. Say this image. Want to modify the color of that and add a user defined shader. Instead of loading from a file, we're just going to modify the shader text in place here. Going to store off the color I sample from my texture sampler. I think this will work. Going to use subscript syntax on that vector to swizzle around the components of it. And we end up with something funny looking like that. I don't know why you'd want that, but you can do it. Uh, also, if you want to actually add parameters, anything you define as a uniform variable on your shader, say you do. float 4, that's going to be interpreted after I reopen the filters window as a color input. Uh, say that I want to multiply my sampled color with some other solid color. In this case, it's still black, so it doesn't look very good. But multiply it by green, we end up with something that looks like that, for example. So that's how you can parameterize your shaders. Uh, it does support float4 variables, as well as ints, bools, regular floats, and texture 2ds. Uh, currently, that's all. It doesn't support vectors other than colors. And I think that's about it. I Hope that's helpful to you if this is something that you might want to use in your streams or other captures. If you have any questions, feel free to post on the video or on the OBS forum thread for the plugin. Uh, I will post links in the video description to where you can download this if you don't want to peer closely at the video. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching.